The ribbon cables from the ZX Spectrum keyboard membrane are quite prone to fracturing, so let me show you how to replace that. Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. I'm using an original ZX Spectrum case in a bare metal emulation project, but one of the keyboard ribbon cables, um, some of the tracks have become fractured and are not working anymore. So it's just a quick video just to show you how to replace a keyboard membrane on, on a ZX Spectrum. So I'm going to be doing it on my ZX Spectrum Plus case, which is, will be the same as the 128K version. Now this is slightly more complicated than the um, 48K rubber key version, but the basic principle is the same. But let me show you how to, go, how to do this and what to look out for. So once you've got your case open, um, basically you just need to do, undo all of the screws, including those for the ribbon cable clamps at the top of the keyboard. So I take those off first, and then we have the back plate uh, and take all the screws off that. Now as you're disassembling it, just make sure that you keep a, a look at which way round everything goes. So there is a lip at the bottom of the base plate um, and that does not want to be pressing into your membrane. So make sure you get that the right way round. But once you've got everything off then, we need to just simply take off the membrane. And as you can see on mine, the place where it's fractured is actually on this um, smaller ribbon cable where it, where it bends down to get down to the um, restraining clamp underneath. Um, so that's where the bend comes in and of course the tracks tend to fracture there. But as you can see we can now see the um, actual rubber mat underneath that which provides a springiness for our keys. And all we need to do then is to line up our new membrane on top of that. Um, again, making sure that we get all the holes lined up and making sure obviously of course that it is the right way round. Then we just need to replace um, the uh, little backing uh, cardboard sheet there. And, and just take very special attention at making sure that you line up your holes and make sure that those holes then of course are lined up with the actual screw fixings underneath. And then on goes our back plate and again just making sure that we get everything lined up. And after that then uh, we just need to get these screws in place. Uh, so I tend to do sort of diagonal corners just generally lining it up and once you're happy that everything is all perfectly um, aligned and all the holes are in place um, then just make sure you screw everything down. So to get hold of a replacement membrane, there are a few companies who do sell them. In the UK, we've got ZX Renew and Retroleum, amongst others. Uh, and again, I'll put links to those in the description down below. So now we get to the important bit, and that is the restraining clamps for the ribbon cables. Now, if you have a look at the ribbon cables coming out, you'll see that they are actually made of three layers. Uh, and that's because the ZX Spectrum Plus has a couple of duplicated keys on the keyboard to make it a bit easier to use. Uh, and in true uh, Sinclair fashion, the way in which these layers are connected together is by simply sandwiching them together between two bits of plastic. Um, so we do need to make sure that we get a good connection between the various layers and then the traces on these three separate layers ribbon cables. So um, we have to pass the ribbon cable through one of these little plastic clamps and this is where of course the flexing of the cable uh, becomes a problem. Um, we need to make sure that we don't clamp it so hard and so tight that the actual uh, membrane is stretched. So as, as you put it through the clamp, just put the clamp pieces together um, a bit loose to begin with. And then if you try and push the ribbon cable back through the clamp, back towards the membrane, that will give you a bit of spare um, slack actually between the membrane where it's clamped down on the keyboard side of it and the actual restraining clamp, just so that when we tighten the restraining clamp, we're not then squeezing and pulling that membrane, which of course is going to make a break. So just make sure you do your best to get that um, in place and just make sure that the actual clamp is clamping down on where those three bits of ribbon cable all come out together and that will press those contacts together and give you a good signal coming from your keyboard. So that's pretty much it all replaced now. Uh, all you need to do is to re-plug the cables back into your motherboard or if you're doing a little um, bare metal emulation project like me, back into your connectors out to your Raspberry Pi. And that should now give you a fully working keyboard.
So I hope you find this useful. Please do like and subscribe to the channel and I look forward to seeing you again very soon. So bye for now. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.